Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and happy new year. Now ever since the mRNA vaccine have become available to the public, there have been a few cases of vaccine allergy reports. Now this week we are going to dive deep down into this topic and look at what are the components or what is causing these vaccine allergies. Now, if you remember part of my video a couple weeks ago, I mentioned I would come back to talk about this topic. Let's have a recap. Now, for the most part, these injection reactions happen within 10 minutes after the injections. And I have several speculations, but I'll also keep an eye on the FDA's latest investigations. And I'll update you all as soon as I find out more on this topic. So in fact, after I attended an ACF's webinar or webcast back in May presented by a scientist from Moderna, I have some concerns about one of the additives uh, in the vaccine formulations and I would put it on my blog post. It was the polyethylene glycol or commonly known as PEG. So today let's look at what polyethylene glycol is. And by the way, if you are new to the channel, I'm Dr. Han. I love to produce science review content, update on the latest global health topic. I also like to share tips for students' learning development. If these are your interest topic, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you are coming back for another week of COVID-19 update, thank you very much. So without further ado, let's dive into the topic. So today we are going to talk about what causes vaccine allergy, what is this PEG compound, and why is it in the vaccines? Like always, a disclaimer, this video is my interpretation and summary of publicly available scientific information. This video does not serve as any advice on treatment, diagnosis, and prevention of any diseases. And if I mentioned any commercial companies in the video, I have no affiliations with them. So let's look at some of the backgrounds. The CDC issued a statement on December 31st talking about COVID-19 vaccine allergies, and it suggests that people that are allergic to the first dose should not get the second dose. And they believe the possible agent that is causing the problem is a compound called polyethylene glycol or PEG. Now today we are look at what is PEG, and what does PEG do, and what contains PEG and how common is this PEG allergy? First fact, what is PEG? PEG stands for polyethylene glycol. It is important to not confuse with ethylene glycol, which is an antifreeze. Okay, they are not the same. Ethylene glycol is a monomer and PEG is a polymer. Now, PEG PEG is a biologically compatible polymer that has been clinically approved to use in many injectable drugs. And in fact, it is also used as a stew softener, such as this one. Now, fact number two, what does PEG do in general? Now, the process to add PEG to any drug compound is called pegylation. The number one reason to have PEG or to do this pegylation process is to make drug or vaccines last longer in the body for it to work. It ties into a concept called pharmacokinetics. Now, that is pretty deep science. I won't go into detail in this video. The general intent is to reduce nonspecific interactions with the rest of the body and also reduce the compound to interact with innate immune system, the immune system that we were born with. Now, if it interact a lot with our innate immune systems, we will basically clear out the compound and make these uh, drug compound useless in our body. So PEG is necessary in this case. So fact number three, what contains PEG? So PEG, there are different formulations. The longer the polymer, the larger the number, such as this one, PEG 3350 is used in a stew softener, like I said earlier, and PEG 2000 is used in COVID-19 vaccines, such as here I bracketed. This is an ingredient list on the Pfizer vaccines. Now, PEG generally have very low toxicity and it's not really absorbed into our body that much. Other uses of PEG include common cancer drugs, household products, food, and even cosmetics. So they are pretty much in many places, uh, although they may be in different lengths. So their molecular weight or they're not the same in some cases. So how common is PEG allergy? 
In fact, PEG allergies are more common than we used to think. According to a very、uh, recent case study by UK investigators at Cambridge University Hospitals, they, they concluded that the life-threatening anaphylaxis, okay, very serious allergic reactions, are rare but possible. Now, It also increased with the risk when you are injecting higher molecular weight or heavier PEG compound, and the risk also increased with second or subsequent exposures. People that are allergic to multiple medications should be cautious, since、so、in some cases they are in fact allergic to the PEG compound rather than the drug molecule itself. So very quickly today, the take-home message is that polyethylene glycol or PEG PEG is clinically approved polymer used in many consumer products, food, and drugs. They are considered to have low toxicity, and systemic absorption is minimum. And PEG is used in both Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines. Now, life-threatening allergic reactions to PEGs is rare but possible, and they are documented. It is very important to follow the CDC recommendations upon having allergic reactions. So, to learn more, here are a couple of the links. Now, first of the links is to show you there are in fact many drugs that are approved by FDA that contain pegylations or pegylator. The second link here is the CDC COVID-19 vaccine and allergic reactions report and with recommendations. And the last one is the study that I quoted out that is published by the UK investigator. So I hope this video have provided some explanations on polyethylene glycol. All right, so that is all for this week's COVID-19 update, and I'll see you again next Sunday. And I wish you all have a happy, wonderful, and healthy New Year. Bye.